With the email notification created, the organization tracking system requires an update to the corresponding records, notify status field, to confirm that the email was sent successfully. So the notify status field contains a default value of zero. Once the email's been sent, we want to update this value to one. To accomplish this, we'll use the program command as a quick alternative to a map to execute an update statement with dynamic content. The program command executes database and system level commands in the process flow. So it includes the SQL or command window to write dynamic commands or system commands such as executing a batch file. So remember when we're setting up our parameters, we use curly brackets in a numeric position in our code to denote a runtime parameter. When connecting to the database, we have to use the question mark to denote parameters and not the curly bracket and a number. So it's important to note that the program command does not return documents into the process flow, but simply executes the command and passes the source documents to the the next shape. So only use this shape for write actions and not for querying. If the command fails, the program command will log an error and stop the document in its tracks. I'm now going to walk through exercise 24 to finish our daily customer wins integration. So again, uh, after creating the email notification, uh, we want to update the organization tracking system's corresponding records, the notify status field, to confirm that the email was sent successfully. So we're going to use the program command shape as a quick alternative to executing an update statement with dynamic content. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hover over the branch shape, and we're going to change the number of branches to three. You're going to see now we have that third branch. So from the execute tab, what we're going to do is we're going to grab a program command shape and we're going to drag it onto our process canvas. So in the program command properties window, we're going to configure it as follows. The type is going to be SQL statement. The run once per execution is going to remain unchecked. For the connection, we're going to choose our Boomi Training MySQL. So remember, all of our connections are in our connection folder now, Boomi Training MySQL. And then we're going to add in the custom SQL script, take some time and enter in that script for your activity guide. After you've entered your SQL script here, it's update customer, set notify status equals one, where customer ID equals question mark. And remember, we have to use the question mark in here for it. We don't use the squiggle brackets with numbers for the program command shape. It has to be a question mark. And for the user ID, this will be the name we've been using through throughout the last couple processes. So in my case, it has been Boomi Trainer. And the other example we gave was John S for John Smith. Here's where you'd enter your unique user ID. If we go down to variable, we're gonna add a parameter. The type is gonna be a profile element. The profile type is gonna be database. And the profile we're referencing is query customer by modified date. The element that we are referencing is going to be our customer underscore ID. And then we're going to hit OK. All right, and then we can hit OK again. We're going to connect branch three to our SQL statement. We are going to add another logic, which is going to be our stop shape. Flowing down that third branch. And then once they're connected, what we're going to do is save. And we are going to execute the process in test mode and note the results. Once you run it in test mode, just be aware that the process can only be executed once. So updating the notify status will not retrieve processes in future executions. So once it's been updated once, it won't update again. It's your turn now to complete exercise 24, which will finish our second integration in the first section of Integration Developer 1.